sunshine, no rain. What's going to happen? Rain or sunshine and no rain? Chaos, corruption. Imagine now one God says, you know what, this guy is talking too much. I want him to be dead right now. That's it. He's God, right? Absolutely all powerful. I will, be, I will be dead. Flood dead. That's it. But the other God says, but this guy is making a little bit of sense. I want him to continue talking. I want to live. I want him to live for another whatever years, 10 years or 20 years or 100 years, right? What's going to happen to me possibly? Either I carry on living and talking now or I fall dead. If I fall dead, then the other God which wanted, other creator which wanted me to live, failed miserably. Not all powerful, not absolute. But if I kept on living and talking, then the God that wanted me to be dead is the God that failed miserably to make me dead. So he wasn't all powerful. He wasn't all powerful enough to make me dead. So if you look at it this way, you cannot have more than one absolute. Because there will be this contradiction. It's not going to work. Yeah. So that's why when we look at this universe, we see evidence of one creator. The universe with all these constants I talk about, evidence is one creator. So that's why we say, yes, as if you don't believe in God, but when you realize that the universe is working, clearly evidence for a creator, and that creator is one and only one. What other characteristics? When you examine the guidance that this creator has sent, you will see it's clearly laid down. This creator is called the creator originator of the universe. This creator is called one who is all hearing, all seeing. The one who relates with its creation. This creator, because it's one, this creator has attributes of perfection. So this creator is just, doesn't say, you know what, because the first human beings, they made a mistake by the whispering of Satan, I'm going to punish you for that. There are religions you'll hear that Adam and Eve is common to Judaism, Christianity and Islam, right? If you consider Judaism and Christianity, they will tell you, you can examine them later and you can examine and question them, that Adam and Eve sinned by eating of the apple in a particular garden, right? Garden of Eden. Were you there? I wasn't there. I'm sure you're not there either. I had no clue what was happening hundreds or thousands of years ago, whenever that might be. So I had zero involvement in this eating of the apple. I didn't know anything about it because I wasn't there. I didn't do anything myself. So if now a God or a concept of God from a religion tells you because of what Adam and Eve have eaten of this apple, you are guilty, you are guilty, you are guilty, I'm guilty. I would say that doesn't look like just. That is a concept of an in, unjust God who is punishing individuals for nothing of their own crimes, own sins. So when Christianity and Judaism tells you like this, you should ask them, where is the justice in there? Because that's not just by punishing someone which has no involvement. You should punish someone who is guilty of the crime. This is the teaching of Islam. So Islam says, look, everyone innocent until they're proven guilty. Everyone is not proven guilty. Do you think this is the right approach? Of course. Is that just? You see how from the sin to become virgins. Why? Because, may I ask you about the sin part? Because this is what it introduced. Excuse me. May I ask you, may I ask you to explain to the lady here, who doesn't believe in Christianity, about how is it just to punish her for a sin that she did not commit when Adam and Eve ate the apple. Go ahead. I want to see how he explains she agreed with you explain it. She doesn't need my explanation. Do you think it's just? What? Is it, that is it, she's guilty for what Adam and Eve did thousands of years ago, perhaps. No, the thing is this God has made a way for mankind, and He has put a law for mankind. But if mankind decided to follow God, He has to keep the, uh, the law of the commandments of God. But if He wants. You see, you have a free will. If you want to, de to, to decide, if you decide to break the law of God, so then you're causing a problem by yourself, not God. It's you that you decided to disobey God. So what happened in the in the Garden of Eden was man became disobedient of God. God has put everything for him. Adam and Eve, you mean, and he right? Told, he gave him the law, his word, mm -hmm. but Adam disobeyed God. 
-hmm. So it's not God that make him dis disobey him. Of course not. God, no. Adam, he's got his own um, yeah, yeah, of his will, free will, like you do, yeah. like I do, like we all do. So using his free will, Adam disobeyed God. So if you talk about Allah being justice, if you talk about Allah being just, so are you talking about a kind of God that let you go to heaven even if you're sinning? Okay. Are you talking about that? So obviously he's not answering that question clearly. He's now talking about something else. I asked you, why do you consider it's just to punish her? What's your name? Charlotte. Charlotte? Charlotte, when she had nothing, no involvement in the sin of Adam. Why is God in the Christian concept punishing Charlotte for the sins of Adam when she has clearly no involvement? And your answer was, we haven't heard. Now you're portraiting Christianity. You're giving a bad name. Would you mind you're, you're, answering you're the question? Otherwise, I, if you don't answer, directly. fine. Do you you the answer? Answer? Can the question be answered? That's why I'm asking you. Answer, okay. please. Now, why is she guilty? So, what's your name? Charlotte. Charlotte. Okay. In the New Testament, or right now, we're talking. Uh, we're talking here. Yeah. It's not. It's not about Adam. Now we're talking here. So God has put the same. Uh, way of uh, eternal e eternity. You see, there are two eternities: hellfire and uh, heaven. So people can still make a decision. If Charlie wants to disobey God, if she doesn't want like to to believe in Him, to follow Him, if she if she keep breaking His commandments. It's very clear according to the Bible. The Bible says whoever was not found written in the Can book of life. Can you address the question? Is she guilty of I'm the answering. sin of Adam? Now you're interrupting. I apologize, so but Bible, I want you to I want you to Bible focus on the sin of Adam. No, hold on. Why now, is she guilty of that? This is this is this is this is what you do. I'm focusing. It looks like you gave me a chance to please go ahead her, explain, but do not but really give a lecture of something else totally. No, I'm not lecturing anything. The Bible says very clear in the Gospel of John chapter three verse sixteen. It says, "For God so loved the world." And that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish. Now there is a there's two things here. Whoever believes in him shall not perish. If you don't believe in him, obviously not in this earth like Allah did. Uh, Allah what, does. What's that got to do with Adam? I'm I'm we're talking about Adam. She, he is answering. Let's uh, let's if, let's hope he does. The Quran says, "Kill disbelievers." Even if I don't believe in Allah right is now it? in this earth, I have to be killed by Muslims. Do but you want to my continue God continue is not like that. Because obviously. He is discussing like everything that. else apart from answering Can that I question. My answer? I'm, I'm answering. What this? What does God this has have to given do her a chance? The killing, as you said, Muslims kill and this. That's what right. has this to do anything? Anything with justifying Charlotte just, being you're, guilty you're, 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 of the sin of Adam? What does that have to do with so it? So God loves her so much. He wants her to be saved. How can she do it? By believing in Jesus Christ and okay. accepting him as her Lord and Savior. Okay. If she do that, she will be saved and she will have everlasting life. Even if she rejects him, God doesn't do anything okay. in this earth. Okay, thank you very much. Life. Thank you. He doesn't do anything to her. Okay, thank but you very Allah, much. Allah Allah does. Does. Allah thank does. you very Allah much. Wants to destroy her. So the question I asked yeah, is yeah, how says, is kill the disbelievers? It just when Adam and Eve sinned hundreds of years ago, when you had no involvement with that sin or that crime, how are you guilty? So the answer he's provided is a standard Christian preaching, totally going away from giving an answer, talking about everything else. Everything else. But, yeah. So I don't have to even make a commentary on this, it's quite obvious. So, so as I am saying, when we are talking about Islam, as a Muslim, Islam is not a new religion. You might think it's a new religion. Islam is a state of submission of yourself to the will of this one and only God. And that happened with the first man that God created until the end of this world. Whoever submits and surrenders their will, linguistically, they are a Muslim and their religion of Islam. In the legal sense, whoever submits and surrenders their will in accordance with the teaching of the last prophet is a Muslim in the technical sense. So, Abraham the prophet, peace be upon him, do you know what was his religion? 
If you ask a Jew and a Christian, if you ask a Jew and a Christian, what is the religion of Abraham? You will see like, because they haven't got a clue. They will say, oh, he was a Hebrew, um, he was, um, but that's not a religion, it's a race. But we can identify what his religion is quite clearly. Judaism and Christianity came much, much later, so of course he wasn't a Jew or a Christian. Did he believe in one God? Clearly he did. Did he sincerely and willingly submit and surrender his will to the will of one true God? Yes, he did. So that makes him a Muslim and his religion in Islam. So Islam, as you can clearly see, all the prophets, whether it's Jesus, peace be upon him, or Moses, or Noah, peace be upon them all, they brought Islam so that we all accept and, and follow what is good for us. So Al Yusuf was a, an individual, bright, thinking, rational, and reasonable. When you study the Quran, when you study the life of the Prophet you will see it resonates with your heart, the teaching. Islam says, look, Islam says, Islam says, be honest and upright. Stand as a righteous, a right, true witness, even if it against you, against your relative, do not be swerved by anything. Be just witness, even if it's against you and against yourself. I think in one of the universities in America, whether it's Harvard or somewhere, they have this plaque, this statement of the Quran to show in a legal school. But this is a sublime teaching what everyone should uphold. Where? If you are going to give witness, be a just witness, even if it goes against your interest or the interest of your family and your relatives and so on. This is what the Quran says. Be a just witness. The Quran says always speak the truth, never speak a lie. Stand firm in justice. Be kind and be merciful. Do not mock people. Do not mock a nation or a community. It may be that they're better than you. Do not insult. Do not backbite. So all of this teaching, your heart will resonate. You'll say, yeah, of course. I like that teaching. Of course I do. It says what? Be compassionate to people. Be merciful to people. Be kind to people. Be just. Of course this is what your heart wants. It says, be you sincere. Of course. It says, read and reflect and investigate. That's what you are doing. And that's what your mind wants. So when you read the Quran, you will see, you already believe in it, in it because what the Quran says about this teaching you already have taken in already so what the Quran is basically saying why would you not come to Islam what's stopping you why would you still persist in following your own desires instead of following the path of the prophets and messengers because through the prophets and messengers the Creator has given us the best guidance of life which will then determine the effects in the hereafter for example when you interact with people what do you do do you deceive them or do you always deal with them honestly the people who have money and wealth and power and means they will say if you can overcome them by your deception so what you become more richer and richer mentality of the people Quran says no in fact, the Quran talks about usury in the sense that God and his messengers dictated war on interest and usury. Because when, you know in this world today, if you want to borrow money, 1,000 pounds, 10,000 pounds, do you pay the same amount back? You have to pay a huge amount of interest. Why? Because they're exploiting your weakness. They know you are in need and these greedy individuals they want to capitalize and make more money on your weakness. Islam says no. You cannot deal with this kind of things. When you interact financially, if someone wants to borrow money, give the same amount back. Don't put interest on charge. So this is more just rather than being so greedy and so on. So when the Quran talks about these things, human interactions, it tells you to deal with these people fairly. Be justly and fairly. And this is what we should do. So, when you examine Islam and when you examine the Quran, your heart will not disagree with the teaching. 
So when you find that the Quran says, fight those who fight you. Exactly. Fight Christians. those who fight you. Christian unbelievers. Please. The Quran says who? Does the Quran? Does the Quran? What does it mean? What does it mean? May I? You have to pay taxes. May I finish? If you don't pay the taxes, you get killed. That's what the Quran says. So the Quran. You say. The Quran says. Please read the Bible too and compare the two of them. Of course. Muhammad. Yes. Be on open mind and read. In Christianity. And you you compare the, the two of them and you find the result. Sure. Exactly. So when the Quran says, fight those who fight you and do not commit transgression, if you're a pacifist, you might say, you shouldn't be fighting at all. But the Quran doesn't take the pacifist stance. Why? Because there are moments in time where you cannot be pacifist. Do you have family? If your family is attacked, are you going to say, oh, here's my child underneath the bed, kill him as well. You're not going to do that. You are going to, with all your strength and ability, defend yourself. You'll say, no, you're not going to let away, you're not going to harm my, my dad, my mom, my sister, my brother, my youngster. I will try to stop you from doing that. This is human nature, how we want to protect our own selves, our own family. So if you are part of a brotherhood or a sisterhood, your own people, you want to protect them. So if, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, if you see your life, the life of your own people, your community is in danger and is threatened, you will resist and you will defend yourself, you will fight. But who do you fight? Are you going to fight when they have done all these things and go at night time and find the little kids and then kill them like a coward? No. You fight the aggressors, you fight those who fight you. This is the teaching of Islam. You don't fight non-combatants. You don't kill women, children, old men, monks, priests. This is the clear teaching of Islam. So what happened yesterday? What happened a few days ago, weeks ago in Manchester or in, in, in uh, Westminster Bridge and so on? Lunatics. Actions of lunatics. This has, of course, of course, of course. That's what they claim to be, right? But, 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 Do you say Allahu Akbar? But, but clearly they are lunatics because it is a sign. Listen, a lunatic, a person who's really. Hindu man saying Allahu Akbar. I never heard Christians say Allahu Akbar. I never said. Let me let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question, if I may, right? If a Muslim says I am a Muslim, my name is Abdullah, and goes and rapes a woman, and says Allahu Akbar and rapes a woman, and do you think now the whole Muslim world should say I apologize on his behalf? Um, this guy is clearly crazy. Islam says no to rape. You can't rape anyone. No, it doesn't say that. It says you can take sex slaves and you can rape the sex slaves. It says that very clearly. You know what? You come and go, come and go, right? You come and go. You, 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 no, you find, you find, for some reason, he thinks somehow you're having some sense and it ha will have an effect on you. He doesn't appreciate that. Unfortunately, this is the reality. If I see, look, if I see someone suddenly realizes that, okay, racism is bad, even if it came from an atheist who advised, I say, thank you for making you understand that racism is bad. I'm not going to say, oh, uh, I have to like, totally dismantle that. No, actually, racism is good because how can you believe in what the atheist says? No. Good can come from lots of people. But what we're saying is, ultimately, what is good is described by God, okay? Even though what you do actions, which may be actions of goodness. But if you deserve, if, if you hope for a reward in the hereafter, you as an atheist won't be getting it because you did not acknowledge the one who created you. So if you work for a company, just to illustrate my point, if you work for a company, right? If you work for a company and then there's a competitor, right, of this company. And then you do all the works with the other, other guys, other company. You distribute their leaflets, do their marketing and so on and so forth. Do you expect at the end of the day, because you're employed, your employer should really give you good wages because you're doing their work? Come on. If you are employed for a company, do the works of that company. So if you do not want to believe God is your creator, don't expect God's going to reward you in the hereafter, even though you do things good. You've been kind and compassionate and so on. What you've done, you've totally said you don't exist. 
you know, my creator. So don't expect God to reward you in the hereafter because he won't.